Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another video game collection video with your boy, me. How you doing? And it has been four years, four years since the Nintendo Switch came out. This bad boy right here uh, this is my original copy that I got exactly four years ago at this day. I was uh, doing an unboxing, I think at this point, uh, and I posted that unboxing. I was probably playing Zelda. I'd assume. I definitely wasn't playing 1-2-Switch, that's for sure. Maybe I was playing Bomberman. I might have been playing Bomberman. Who knows? Um, and it's been four years. It has some scratches and stuff, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Scratches are thanks to the doc. Thanks. I'm looking right at him. He knows what he did. Uh, and I have the Pro Split Pad Pro, whatever the hell they're called, controllers. And these are really good. Very comfortable. I probably showed these off last year um, when I did a a yearly my yearly nintendo switch collection update i try to do these every third of march but sometimes i forget and then it ends up being like a day later or something i'm like ah crap uh, but this time i i nailed it it's the third of march at least while i'm recording this uh but anyway this is my uh switch console i have tons of digital games but i also have tons tons of physical games i'm looking at them right here baby Ooh, I got so many. Yeah, you can't. You guys can't see. I'm, I'm hiding from you because I, I don't want to spoil the surprise. But I got tons, tons. And since last year, I actually doubled my collection. Last year, I had a little over 70 games. This year, I have just a little over 150. 150 games. That's that's a lot more than 70. I don't know if you know that. Um, so you know what? Without further ado. Let's get to my collection. Uh, but we're gonna start off with the limited run games and 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 special reserve games and and the the rare games and the valuable games and stuff like that. We're gonna get to that first, and then we'll get into the more common stuff. Um, so let's get to that first. But first, I need to put this bad boy away because I can't have this in my hand the entire time, and I have no room to place it down. Okay, so let's get this started we're gonna start off with a big boy i actually just got this recently this is the dead cells prisoner edition uh amazon was selling this for like 70 something bucks and my immediate thought was that i have dead cells the original game which still sells for like 20 25 bucks so i was gonna buy this and resell my old version of dead cells i have yet to do that and to be honest i don't know if i even want to and i know that's stupid because this comes with the game of the year edition which comes with all the dlc um at least most of it. I think it wasn't their DLC that just came out for Dead Cells, I think. Um, but I played a few hours of this game, loved it back when it first came out back in 2018. Of course, um, it got, <laughs> I think the game was already popular, I think. It was already doing well. But I think the game got a little bit more popular after IGN, uh, whoever reviewed it, I forgot his name, Philip something, uh, ripped off that review. <laughs> I, I will never forget that. I won't. Ripped off a review from like a, a little known YouTuber at the time. Um, Boomstick Gaming, I think his name was. Um, I think it was, right? Um, and uh, ripped this review off um, and posted it as his own. And people, people, I don't forget, at least I I, I won't ever forget. You know what you did. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a really nice collector's edition. It's way bigger than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be like, like it's it's big compared to, I don't want to show you something else, but compared to like a regular Switch case, like look at, look at the comparison. It's way bigger than I thought. It comes with a figure, it comes with a couple other things. Uh, it's a really nice, really nice, really nice uh, showpiece. The metal box itself looks nice uh, for 70, like 70 something bucks. Not bad. I'll take it. All right, let's get on to some of the limited run. I got, of course, got my girl Shantae. Got Shantae uh, and the Seven Sirens, which I have yet to play. I really like the Shantae games, uh, and I had to get this. I also got the other limited run releases for Shantae. The only one I don't have is the Pirate's Curse, which is like the most valuable one, of course. But I got everything else, so it's going to be added to the collection. Or actually, I guess it's already in the collection. Um, oh, let's start off with this. Stardew Valley. This is the Fan Gamer Collector's Edition. Um, one of my favorite games of all time is Stardew Valley. Love this game to death, and this is one of the best looking boxes I think I've ever seen. Look at this artwork. Look at it. Just look. It's amazing. I love it. Look at the sides. Dude, it's one, it's one gorgeous box for, you know what? A gorgeous game. One of my favorite games ever. Ever. Stardew Valley. There you go. Next is another game that is one of my favorite games of all time, and that is Dust in Elysian Tale. Now, don't let it be known here, but I, I, like, I love this game. That doesn't make any sense. What I meant to say was, don't let it, don't, don't be confused. I'm not, I'm not furry. I'm not into that stuff. But 
This game is amazing. I think it has some of the best combat in any 2D game ever, personally. It is a lot of fun. I bought this immediately when Limited Run Games had this, and now it's like a $150 to $200 like collector's edition, which is great. Um, there's Fidget. Great game. Highly recommended. I know it looks like if you see gameplay, you'll be like, furry game. No, it's actually a great game. It really is. Next is a game I just got, and that is CrossCode. This is the Strictly Limited Games release, I think. I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, does it say? Uh, I don't think so. I don't see it. No. I'm pretty sure it's Strictly Limited. Uh, but I had to get this because I heard this game is phenomenal. Have yet to play it yet. I want to play it this year. Uh, but I had to get this, and it's a nice little box. So it's heavy, too. Has a lot. Has a lot of goodies. That also came with. Let me just show you that real quick. Uh, I have it buried here. I've just dropped everything. Um, it came with a steelbook for CrossCode. Doesn't come with a game, but when you take the game out of that, you can put it in here. There you go. Look at that. Um, yeah, put it right. Put it right here. Uh, next is I the Somnium Files, which is a game that is from the creator of one of my favorite series ever, Zero Escape. Love that series. Oh, it's so good. Zero Escape, you need to play that series. Uh, 999, Nine Hours, Nine Person, Nine Doors, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, and Zero Time Dilemma, all fantastic games. Uh, some of them are more fantastic than the other and than others. I think Zero Escape is the best one of the three. 999, a close second. And then the third one is Zero Time Dilemma, which is still great. I actually did a full playthrough of that game. Um, and uh, I have Somnium Files, Special Agent Edition. I had to get this one. Anime. I like anime. So, I had to get it. Uh, I played about 10 hours of that game, so I didn't finish it. But I really loved what I played, so I need to go back to it. Next is Xenoblade Chronicles, the Definitive Works set, which is the Definitive Edition, of course, of Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Came out last year. I did not get the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Definitive Works, which I should have because I think it's like super valuable now. But I do have this one, and it is nice. It comes with a nice little art book. You can see my unboxing of that on the channel. One thing you can't see an unboxing for because I didn't even open it yet, and that is Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light 30th Anniversary Edition. Uh, this I had to get uh, once they announced this. I was like, I need that right, right, right in my veins, right here. Put it in the wrist. I need it, uh, and I got it. So it's mine. Best Buy shout outs because it was hard to get this, and Best Buy, Best Buy had me covered. Thank you, Best Buy. Another watching. Um, now let me get to the smaller stack. I have like smaller collector's editions. This one, I was just gonna throw it in there because it's like in a like in a box. It's not really that valuable, but uh, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It has like a little outer box, so that's the only reason why I include it. Why not? I'll put it over here. Just got this, Carry On from Special Reserve Games. Had to get this. Um, not gonna lie, didn't love this game. I actually, I bought this before the game even, I think the game just came out, so I bought this I was like, cool, had to get it before it sold out, of course. I think, actually, I think it was an open pre-order, to be honest, but I bought it, and I was like, whatever. Um, and uh, not the biggest fan of the game, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, it was okay from what I played. I didn't finish it, it's only like three hours long. I probably played like two hours, so I'm pretty close, so maybe I should just finish it. But, I don't know, I, I love the way the game looks, and I love the premise. Ever since this game was announced back in, I think, early 2019, I was like, very excited for it, but, I was a little let down, personally. That was just me. But uh, maybe I'll like it more if I finish it. I don't know. Um, next is Shantae Half Genie Hero. Uh, this is the uh, day one edition. I, I got this off uh, offer up for a pretty decent price, but it is like crunched. But it does come with everything it's supposed to come with. It's a little crunched, but you know what? Whatever. I got it for a good price. So. All right. Remember when I said Best Buy got me covered? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, maybe, maybe this was Amazon, actually. I don't remember. I think this was... I want to say this was Best Buy, but it might have been Amazon. Um, I got the Rune Factory uh, Archival Edition. Rune Factory 4 Archival, Archival Edition, which I think is like going up in price now. I think it's like a $90 to $100 uh, edition. When this first came out, I think it was only $50? Because I think the game was $40. Yeah, I think this is $10 extra. But uh, I had to get it because I really wanted to play the Rune Factory series, and I got about 40 hours into this game. Never finished it because it's very long, but um, I really loved it, what I played. I really did, so I want to go back to it. But at this point, Rune Factory 5 comes out in like two months, so I might as well just wait and play that. Uh, and that game looks way, way more 
uh, advanced, let's just say. Uh, but this game is uh, great. It looks better than it did on 3DS because uh, it's a 3DS port that was updated. And uh, yeah, it has anime. You like anime? This game's got anime. Actually, does it have anime cutscenes? I don't think it does. Um, that's my that's my wife, by the way. That's what they call him, right? I forgot her name. <laughs> Is it Forte? I think that's her name. Yeah. Anyway, that was the one I was hitting on because she was a warrior, and that's hot. that's hot. <laughs> Yo, that's hot. Yo, hit me with that show, baby. Next. Next is my friend Pedro, which is actually a really fun game. This one uh, is another Special Reserve Games game. Um, I got 41.97 out of 5,000, which that sucks. That's a terrible number. Uh, but um, yeah, this is a really good game. It also came with like a little banana plush, which is, of course, that's Pedro. Um, and I think it came with something else, but really cool. Special Reserve Games, top tier when it comes to their presentation for like their limited run games. Um, they're limited games, you know, because this is like the normal version of this game. This only costs, I think, 35, 40 bucks. Um, and you get this nice little outer box. You get a couple of additional things. Um, I feel like you got one, like two things. You got the plush and then something else, I feel like. Uh, and then you get this nice outer box and stuff. And then you, of course, get the game and whatever is inside the box. I actually forgot at this point what the hell is in this box. There might not be anything in the box. I don't remember. But I haven't opened it, obviously. Or else I tell you. Uh, shout outs to my boy Adrian. He got me this uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Uh, he sent me this, and then I took about a year to pay him back. So, you know, shout outs. But uh, Curse of the Moon, this is the classic edition, by the way. Curse of the Moon's a great game. Really, really great. T tough is tough. tough it's tough. Uh, I, I never finished the second one yet. I got like, I would say like an, like an hour and a half in. So I was like probably halfway through. Again, just like freaking carry on uh but there's so many games out i just like i'm like curse of the moon 2 that's great we just played curse of the moon 1 again at least i did again a couple or a few months ago like before like right when curse of the moon 2 came out it was like maybe four or five months earlier and this we played this game again so it was like already too like too soon in between you know what i mean um but curse of the moon i'm glad that got a sequel um and only like i think a year later because then curse of the moon 1 come out in 2019 I think, well, no, I think it was like 20, like late 2018. It was like a few months before Ritual of the Night came out, which I never finished that either. I got like six hours in. That's a tough game too, which you would expect. Cause that that's the good shit. That I mean, not that that's a good shit too. I'm just saying that's the one everybody was waiting for. Um, I got the Aladdin and the Lion King Retro Edition, which is like the it's it, it looks like the Sega Genesis copy of those games which is good because that's I, if i remember correctly that's the best version right of both of these games at least aladdin right has like all the music am i right or wrong there i, I might be wrong the reason why i wanted to get this is because uh the, they had the snes looking one too the snes one was kind of weird looking i don't know it didn't really look like an snes box it kind of did, but this one looked straight up like a Sega Genesis box, so I had to get it. Um, and I think it was only 30 bucks. I don't know how much it goes for now. Probably not as much. Maybe even less. Maybe a little bit more. I, uh, I still have that Deadly Premonition Collector's Edition. I think I showed this last year. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I definitely did because I just looked at I looked up my collection video from last year, and it's in the thumbnail. Um, and uh, yeah, Deadly Premonition, amazing game. Uh, I was very excited for that sequel. Couldn't get very far into it because it was it was. It was charming, don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed what I played. I did a whole, like, hour and a half, like... Was it an hour and a half? It was, like, a little over an hour, like, gore plays for the first hour or so of the game. Uh, it was charming as hell. I was I was happy to be back with my boy Francis, but, uh... uh yeah. Anyway, this comes with, like, really awesome pins. So, you don't know how badly I, I look at it every time and, and want to open it. Because I do. I really do. Uh, and the last one of these boxed ones is... Glee, Gris, is it Gris or Gris? I've heard it pronounced Grice, Grice, Gris, Gru, it's a Fugazi, it's a Fuguzi, I don't freaking know. Um, but this is a really, really valuable one. This is like a $200 one. This is one of uh, Special Reserve Games, like, not first ones, but like one of their more famous ones. Because uh, they re-released this game a lot. So there you go, that is that. Of course, I show that every year. I feel like I had that for like the last two updates. I could be wrong there. But uh, I also have the art book for that, which is rare also that's a, an amazing game though one of the most beautiful games i've ever played um and it's a it's a story that you have to really dive deep into to understand what's actually going on um but once you do you're like you, you'll be like whoa that's deep as hell my guy 
<laughs> you'll say that. You'll say exactly that. Anyway, let's get to the single games, I guess, not the collector's editions, that are pretty valuable. So, I already mentioned Gris before, and now I have the Special Reserve Slipcover Edition of Gris. Gris. I'm going to say Gris. I'm going to say Gris. It might be Gris. I think it's Gris, but I'm going to say Gris. Gris sounds better, to be honest. I'll say Gris. Gris. <laughs> Gris does sound better than Gris, because Gris... I, I'm expecting John Travolta to show up, or, you know... You know, a frying pan at least. So Grease right here, or Gree, I just said I would say Gree. Uh, this is the slipcover edition, so it has the same kind of box art kind of. Um, amazing art. Um, I'm talking about the same box art as this, but Signature Edition, which I believe that's what it's called. Um, no, actually, I don't think that's what it's called. What is this version called? I think it's just Gree. It's just a Gree. It's just Gree. Uh, anyway, slipcover is amazing. I love that. That's... I won't spoil it, even though it's not really, you can't really spoil a game. Um, that, that version goes for like a hundred bucks. Um, Saturday Morning RPG, I only put this in here even though this one doesn't go for much, uh, because it is a limited run games um, release. I don't actually have that many limited run games in my Switch collection, uh, besides the ones I already showed you. Uh, most of my collection is not limited run games, but uh, Saturday Morning RPG, this is one of them. The reason why I got this is because it is, I think it was like one of the first ones, right? It was number five for Switch games. It was also one of the first games, period, limited run released. It was Breach and Clear was the first game uh, on Vita, and Saturday Morning RPG was the second one. And I have Saturday Morning RPG. That's right. I was there pretty much since the beginning for limited run games. So, you know what? You might think you're an original, and you probably are, maybe. But I was original, too, kind of. Um, to be fair, I was there when Breach and Clear came out first. I forgot. Someone mentioned it on Twitter. And it was like, the, oh, this game's out for like this limited run company or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't buy it. Uh, but then they released Saturday Morning RPG. And for some reason, I was thinking like, <sighs> I, Saturday Morning RPG was a game I always wanted to play because it looked like right up my alley. So I was just like, let me buy it. And I bought the PS4 and Vita copies. And none of those are kind of sought after. I'm not too sure, but the Switch version isn't. Um, next is Grandia HD Collection. Now, this is very very rare i think this goes for like 120 bucks um around there which makes sense considering it was a limited run game that cost 55 dollars to buy most of their regular cased switch games go for around 30 40. this one new this one was 55 that was a premium um which i guess makes sense the game itself is already 30 bucks digitally so if you want to get the physical 50 would have been a little bit more fair. I don't know why it was 55. 55 was a little whatever, but whatever. Anyway, it is going for a lot, so I can't really complain. Uh, Grandia 2 is the only one I played of those. I think Grandia 2. There was one. On, there was a. There was a few on PS2, but the one I played was it had like a dark, like a black case. I'm talking. I'm talking about the front of the case, and it had like a, a kid's face. I played that one. I didn't play too much of it. Only a few hours, but I think I think that's two, and two is in this, so I could be wrong. Next is Atelere Riza Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout. I, pro I probably did not pronounce that. I think it's Atelere, right? Riza, Riza, Rise Up. Uh, this is a very very hard to find game. Uh, it is a uh, game that you don't find for cheap very often and I had to get it when Amazon restocked it. Uh, it. I heard it's also a very good game so I will play it in the future. I'm um, even considering buying the second one because that might be a hard to find game in the future as well. I think a lot of people um, are thinking the same thing though so I'm still... I'm, hey, I'm, 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 I might. I might. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. This is actually from I believe I Am 8-Bit, right? Yeah, has the eight on it. So, um, I am a bit. I ordered this like early last year. It took a little while, but it comes with a nice little slip cover, and it's like a nice little shiny like foil um, cover. Uh, this is a game series I've been well. I guess this is a game series technically because um, there's a bunch of different episodes. But uh, this is one I've been wanting to play for a very long time, and I'm glad I finally have it in some form. Even though I think I'll probably buy it digitally anyway because I don't really want to open this. Um, but uh, yeah, I've heard it's great. I think it's going to be right up my alley, honestly. Last two games and the more valuable things, and we'll go on to the other stuff. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is actually rising up in price. This is like a $80 to $100 game now. <laughs> honestly, I saw it go up above $100. I think I saw one sell for $110 recently. Uh, and yeah, yeah, this is uh, becoming hard to find. This is a 
going up there in the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 1 on Wii like 10 years ago, like value, not 10 years ago, but like 2013, I guess. Um, remember when Xenoblade Chronicles 1 on Wii was extremely freaking rare? Hey, guess what? I had that game when it originally came out. What's up? I'm the original. I did finish that game too. That game's great. And then I never finished this one. But of course, she's also, Pyra is also going to be, and Mithra is going to be in uh, Smash. So, which by the way, I think tomorrow as of recording is that, uh, is that uh, direct. So I need to watch that even though I don't really play Smash that much. And I don't really, I, I, I didn't play a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but I'll check it out. Uh, next, and the last one is Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna which is a game I played about 7-8 hours of. Really enjoyed it. I really want to get into the series. Of all the JRPG series out there, Yeast has always, or Ease has always been the series I've, I've wanted to really dive deep into. And I heard this game was amazing. Uh, I love the idea of it being like you're on a, a deserted island and you have to kind of build up a community, kind of. Uh, I always thought that was great. I didn't get too far into it, but this is now like a $90 to $100 game. And it also comes with the cards, which I was smart. At the time, I never opened the pack of cards, so that's still sealed, and it comes with the map thing, and the game, of course, and, uh, yeah. Boom! Valuable. Will that go down in value? Maybe. Probably. I don't know. But now, I mean, we're about 20 minutes into this. Now let's get to the majority of my collection, which I'll, I'll go through this a little bit quicker, because some of this I, I, I have as a collection, but I haven't played, so, and some of them aren't really worth a lot, so we'll get through this stuff pretty quickly. I think probably the next 20, 30 minutes. So, uh, yeah, let me just pause this real quick and we'll get to it. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right. So I have six stacks of games around, I'll say like maybe 20 or so games in each pile. So let's get to it. Dead Cells, baby. Of course, I just mentioned I have the game of the year edition. I'll count this as its own thing because it's a different version of the game. So bam, baby. Uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, what a fun game. I actually been wanting to go back to this game uh, recently. And uh, boom, I think I'll waste time if I keep opening each case. Um, Super Mario Brothers, nope. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Have yet to play Bowser's Fury, but I'm at, I think, World 8? I think 8 of uh, 3D World. And very fun game, very fun game. Uh, I think I'm gonna pause it for now because I've been wanting to play other things. Um, and try the Bowser's Fury mode, and then come back to it at a later date, because uh, it's a very fun game, but I, I, not that I'm getting sick of it, it's just like I'm kind of out of that mood, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not really in the mood to play platformers right now, so I might stop playing that before I get sick of it. Paper Mario Origami King, have yet to play this yet, but I've heard it's really good. If you like A Thousand Year Door, this one has the humor. That's what I heard the most, like, it's, it's funny. It has, a, it has a good story for the most part. Which is good, not the gameplay though. Uh, Indivisible, I only picked this up because I heard this might actually in the future be pretty hard to find because I don't even I don't even think it was gonna originally come out on Switch. Well, it was, but it, there was a lot of issues with the the developers and stuff, and like this was supposed to come out like 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 early last year or late 2019 or something like that. But I got it now. Uh, Story of Season Friends of Mineral Town, of course, which is a Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town uh, remake. Uh, great. Played like 30, 35 hours of this. Such a peaceful game. I want to go back to it, but we do have that new Story of Seasons game coming out later this month, so I'll probably just pick it up there. Uh, it does come with a thing. Um, oh, I have Hyrule Warriors in there. I guess I, I guess I swapped it in there. Spoilers, I have Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> Age of Calamity. Um, but Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. I do have the game. Believe me, I did an unboxing. Uh, great game. Oh, yeah, these games. I'll show these quick. Um, it, these were on sale for, like, super cheap, but it's these download code-only games. So I'm going to count them because they're games technically, but uh, and they're sealed. But I got Rally Racers. I think they were, like, six bucks each. James Pond, Robocod. I remember James Pond. Uh, and Fruit Fall Crush. I think there's another one that's like this. It, it got separated for some reason. Oh, here it is. I just found it. There you go. Impossible Mission. So there you go. Look at that. Four games down quickly. Ruin Factory 4 Special. I'm not going to count this, obviously, because I already showed you the special edition, but uh, here it is. Just in case you thought I didn't have it. And that one's actually in there. I love when games include the instruction manual. Uh, you can think, like, Atlas, I, th I think is one of them. Xseed is one of them. Um, I think Atlas is one of them. That always includes one, right? 
I think so. That sounds right, but maybe it's wrong. Uh, I just got this. I, I literally just got this like yesterday from Gamefly. Cadence of Hyrule. They had it for 20 bucks used. Had to get it. Had to get it. Heard it was great, so I really want to play this. Resident Evil Triple Pack. Uh, this one comes with four, five, and six. Sadly, I got it used, so it only comes with um, four, which is the best one, so whatever. Um, it does have the digital code there, but they have been used already, so technically only one game, I guess. Same thing with this one. This is Resident Evil Origins, and it comes in this shitty GameStop case. I, I, will, I will say, I like this GameStop case better than the other ones they used to have, uh, which you'll see in a second. If Actually, if I can dig them out, where are they? You know, I'll show you later. You'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Resident Evil Origins. This comes with the first, not the first two games, but Resident Evil 0 and 1. It actually only comes with 0, which is actually okay because I, I, I've i been wanting to get Resident Evil 1 on Switch for a little while, and they always sell that for like 10 bucks. So I might just buy that in the future, and then I'll have both of them anyway. So Because I will definitely not buy Resident Evil 0 digitally. So. Uh, next is Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection. Just got that one. Uh, so, there you go. Complete. I'm going to stop popping the cases. We're going we're to be here too long. Pokemon Sword, baby. Just played this recently. Actually really liked it. Is there another game in there? Oh, yeah. There's, uh, there's Story of Seasons. There you go. There's Story of Seasons. And there's Pokemon Sword. I guess I, I got lazy. And I, I didn't want to take... Yeah, let's do it right now. I just said I don't want to waste time. But I'm going to waste time right now. Uh, but I, I actually just played it. And... I surprisingly had a good time. I don't really play Pokemon games anymore, but uh, I was in the mood recently, and I was just like, let's do it. And I I played the shit out of that, so hell yeah. I really enjoyed it. Not amazing. I'd say like an, like an 8 out of 10, but I did enjoy it. It, it scratched that itch. And there's I, the Somnium Files again. Don't worry, I don't double count games. So when I counted them, I didn't count the games again. You know what I mean? So... Um, Darksiders War uh, Mastered Edition. This one is really cool. The reason why I got this is because this was actually a misprint. Um, because you know how most spines are red? This one was black. Whoa, whoa, definitely stands out. Um, so, had to get that. And also, that's a great game. And that's a great port of that game, too. Uh, Dark, nope, Dragon Quest Builders 2. I got like 20, 25 hours into this game. I was addicted for the longest time. Did I redeem that? Just in case I didn't redeem it. You probably already saw it. Whatever. If you got it, good for you. Um, but, uh, yeah, this game is really, really good. And I want to go back to it really badly. But uh, I have so many games that are kind of like it that I don't know when that will happen. But I really was addicted to it for a little while. Bioshock Collection. I'm going to tell you right here, besides Darksiders, the best ports you can get on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, maybe even Doom, Doom Eternal probably counts too. But Bioshock Collection, hold, I played the entirety of Bioshock 1 on a handheld and it looked great, played great. I mean, it was 30 frames, but whatever. Um, it was fantastic. I, mm, mm, I want to play Bioshock Infinite. I actually did. I played a few hours, but I want to finish the entire game on here. Fantastic. They did a great job of porting this. Might be one of the best ports ever. Just here, not even for a Switch. They did a great job. Uh, Call of Juarez Gunslinger. This is also one of those download code games, but uh, it was 10 bucks on Amazon. And this was a. It was definitely better than Call of Juarez The Cartel, which I'd rather not talk about because that game fucking sucked the balls. And I have a, I have bad, bad YouTube history with that game. And let's just say I did a review for that game and U Ubisoft took my review down because I used gameplay. So I was like, okay. And then I did a review again for Call of Juarez The Cartel where it was just my face. There was no gameplay. And it was just me saying this game sucks, it's terrible, it's awful, it's a, it's a crime. It was, it was, it was, that game is one of the worst games I've ever played. And then it got removed again. It was my face talking about a game and they removed it. Ubisoft. Anyway, Digi, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Complete edition. I, I got this Technically two games, but uh, I got this. Uh, I think GameStop had it for twenty bucks, so I heard it, they were really good games. So, and I like Digimon. It's been a little while, but I like it. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I've been really wanting to play this game. Uh, I think this is going to be the year that I play this and really get sucked into it. Catherine Full Body. Uh, Catherine's a very weird and really fun game. Atlas really likes doing these type of games. I feel like where they they take an old game and then like add a new character to it and, and give it like a new spin almost 
Uh, and that's what they did with this one. They did it with Persona, of course. Uh, that's two uh, examples. I'm sure there's another example. There has to be. What is in here, by the way? Oh, it comes with like a little charm. Oh, look, it comes with a little, uh, little background. Did I do an unboxing for this? It comes with a little pin. Or is that pin? No, it's a chain. That's cool. A little sheep. Which is cool. That's a dream sequence thing. I haven't played that game in a long time. Uh, Gunvolt Striker Pack. At, I think it's Azor. Yeah, a Azor Striker Gun Pack. Go Azor Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack. Why is it called that? <laughs> Did they put Striker in it twice? I think the Striker Pack is just this particular version of the game. But I think it comes with the... Does it doesn't come with the Mighty Number no. 9 stuff? Or does it not? Because this game had like a Mighty Number no. 9 crossover. I guess not. Uh, oh, it has 60 frames per second. I heard this is a very fun series, so I wanted to get it when it was on sale at GameStop. Uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I got this during like a Target sale. It wasn't really a sale, it was more like a clearance. They're like, get rid of a lot of their stuff. And I was like, ooh, this was like, I think 15 bucks. And at the time it was like a 30, 40 dollar game. I was like, yes, please. I got that shit, you damn straight. Of course, Smash Brothers Ultimate. Do I need to say anything about this game? It's a great game. I'm just not good at it. So I only play when friends play it. So, and I really, I, I mean, I love the trailers. Don't get me wrong. It's hype. It is hype. And if Doom Slayer is in the game in the future, boy's gonna go in. I mean, I'm gonna suck at the game, but <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna try. 1971 Project Helios. Uh, this was a, like a, I think it, was just, it was, I think it was just five bucks at GameStop too, but I bought it when it was ten bucks like a month or, or so ago. Uh, it looks interesting, more like a like a like a resource management kind of like strategy game. But um, yeah, I just added it to the collection. XCOM 2 collection. A few months ago, I was really clamoring to play XCOM. I don't know why. I never usually play XCOM, but I was really clamoring and. I think it was Target that had this for, no, it was Amazon. I think it was Target also, but I think Amazon had it for 15 bucks and I was like, sold. And I got it for Black Friday, so. It was a Black Friday deal, I don't think, I didn't mention that. Um, this one, I, I'm not counting in the collection, but I'm gonna show it anyway. Final Fantasy VII and eight double pack. The reason why, oh, yeah, eight, yeah, I was right. Um, the reason why I'm not counting is because there is no actual game, obviously, so I'm not gonna count it. Even though I have seven, I think I have eight also on Switch digitally. Um, there is no game with this, so I'm, I'm not counting it. I already counted the games. I already made sure not to count that. I just wanted to show it though. Um, Arms, uh, this game's a lot of fun. I remember when it first came out and I was, a, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say I was addicted to it. I, I played it for like five, six hours straight the first day I got it. And then like a day later, I don't know what happened, but I played it for like an hour and then I just never played it again. I like I was addicted to it the first day. I was playing it nonstop. I was really good with it. I was really having a lot of fun playing online and playing the, the little arcade mode thing. And then I just didn't play it anymore. I don't know what happened. I really don't. I really enjoyed it, but I, like I played it the next day and then that was it. It was weird. I had no interest in playing it anymore. Very few times has that happened to me. Mario Tennis Aces, uh, this is a kind of similar thing that happened with ARMS. Um, not exactly, because this game, I had a lot of fun, but I had some problems with it, and the, the, the multiplayer was ridiculous. Every time I would play it, I would get stacked up with somebody that was way higher rank than me, and I would do okay for the most part, but I was always getting destroyed pretty much. I, like, I would do okay considering my rank compared to theirs, but um, I would always get destroyed. And uh, I don't know if they fixed that. I don't know if it was a problem with anybody else, but I had I had, I had, had issues with the the multiplayer ranking. And I played this game when it first came out too. I, I can only imagine how terrible it is now. Um, Killer Queen Black, this is a game me and a, a few of the boys played. Really fun, um, really intense at times. Uh, yeah, I think it just went on Game Pass, so I actually recommend it if you have Game Pass. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This is on my backlog. Everybody says this is one of the best platformers ever. I played about an hour of it, and I liked it, but I think this is a game you really have to get into. So, I also hear that's not a game you want to play with a friend because you might not have that friend anymore <laughs> after some time. Um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE Sharp. Sharp, Sharp FE, Encore, whatever. Uh, I played about three hours of this when it first came out on the Wii U, um, which was really surprising because I was like done with the Wii U after the first year. But this game, I really wanted to play. I played a few hours of it, um, liked it, but just never went back to it. And now I have on Switch, so I will play that eventually one day. 
Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you know me, you know I'm not like the biggest Animal Crossing fan, which is weird because I love Harvest Moon and I love Story of Seasons, which is, which is Harvest Moon. Um, and I love Stardew Valley and, and all these like farming games. This game, this series I never really got into as much as Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons and and uh, I guess now Rune Factory and Sardu. Uh, I don't know what it was, it just, I, did, I never did. I never did, but I played the shit out of this game when it first came out. Uh, it came out at the perfect time. I wasn't like in the best mood at the time, let's just say. Um, and uh, it was the perfect game. It was the perfect game for the time. So I played like 45 hours, I think, oh, which is nothing compared to some people, but that's a lot for me considering I don't play Animal Crossing. And I do want to go back to it. The only, the reason why I really dropped off of it is because of that bunny, that bunny fuck. What's his name? Zipper? I fucking hate it. If I ever see that... Oh, he's, he's coming back in like a month. Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. If I play this game and then I get into it again and then like a few weeks from now he fucking shows back up, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna jump into the fucking computer screen, the little switch screen. I'm gonna jump into that small little switch screen. I'm gonna fit my fat ass in there and I'm gonna fucking get my garage out. I'm gonna fucking strangle him to death. I swear to god. Don't ask me why I have a garage. Anyway, Doom. That's the, that's what's gonna happen. Watch out, Zipper. Doom is coming. <laughs> You're, it's your Doomsday. Doom on Switch is great. I had to get it on Switch because uh, first of all, that box art is better, way freaking better than the one that came with Xbox One or PS4. Um, so I was like, I'm not even kidding. That was actually a big reason why I wanted to get it. And also, it's an amazing game. Doom is like, Besides Overwatch for me, the best game of 2016. So, uh, Odd World Stranger's Wrath. Oh, I actually forgot. I have the um, the special edition of this. I forgot to bring it. Um, my bad. <laughs> so I have the special edition of this, but here you go. That's the regular edition. Next is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Of course, you saw the uh, big box, so I won't say too much. Besides, play that game. It's amazing. I think the game, it's weird. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is like a $100 game. But Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, I think right now, is like you can get for like 30 bucks. Maybe it'll go back up in price in the future. We'll see. Uh, Has Been Heroes. This uh, I got like really close to the Switch launch. Um, and this is a, uh, at the time GameStop exclusive. Um, but I think you can get it pretty much anywhere. Uh, I kept it sealed. It was only like 20 bucks. <sighs> this game. The World Ends With You Final Remix. Now, don't don't give me a dislike and then leave. I'm not saying the game is bad. I just don't. I, I really want to play this game. You have no idea. I've been wanting to play this game for so long. I just do not like the controls on Switch. On DS, I probably would like the controls. I just never got around to playing it on DS. Switch? I just, I couldn't. I really, I couldn't. It was like, it's like you had to touch the screen. I'm sure on on like uh, docked, it's a little bit better. I didn't try it on docked, but um, I wish they just gave it regular controls. Maybe did they update it? Maybe they did. I don't know, but I still have it because I'm gonna give it a try eventually one day. Um, another try. Sushi Striker: The Way of the Sushido. I heard this is actually a pretty fun game. Um, went down in value really quick, but I heard it's fun. So I might try that in the future. Moonlighter. Now this is a game that really I enjoyed from what I played. Uh, you go into a dungeon, you just you, you wreck things. You know, you go deeper into the dungeon, you get more valuable things, and you can sell at your shop. So it's like a shop selling simulator and a dungeon crawling simulator, I guess. Not some, but like a dungeon crawling RPG kind of. It's really good. I really like the way it looks. The pixel art is amazing in that game. Uh, Starlink. Starlink, you know, gets a lot of shit, but I actually thought Starlink was pretty good. I, I enjoyed what I played of that game. So shout outs to Starlink. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. Um, I, I haven't played this one, uh, but I will say I'm not the biggest fan of the Dynasty Warriors games, but I like Hyrule Warriors. I haven't played this one though. I don't know if that one's good. <sighs> Disaster Report 4. I should have got this on PS4. This game is like super rare on PS4 now. Well, not super rare, but it's like an 80 $90 game. Um, I think on Switch, it's still like a $50 game, which is fine. Um, and, but it just runs way worse. And now I have a PS5, so it'd be, it would run a little bit better on PS5. <sighs> I should have got it on there. But uh, I love Disaster Report. I really did the first game. And Raw Danger is great, too. But uh, the third one never came to America. That was only on PSP, I think, which I can only assume it runs horribly on PSP. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen gameplay of that game, but I'm assuming it's just it's a, it's a nightmare on that console. But um, 
I love the first game, I really do. The first game was so unique. It was a survival horror game where there was no zombies, there was no ghosts, there was no werewolves, there was no goblins, there was no there was no man with scissors, there was no uh, uh, guy, big, big, big guy with two funny looking eyes looking the other directions. I'm trying to remember the guy from Haunting Ground. Um, who, who else chases you? Yeah, there was no pyramid head, there was no there was no uh, ghost from Mario. I mean, that scared me as a kid. Um, this was all about uh, earth, earthquake and tsunamis and shit that can actually happen. That would be actual, actually scary. So I had to pick this one up because I love that first game. I really do. It's one of my favorite underrated like cult classics. I still have my copy since I was a kid. I had that game since 2004. Still have my PS2 copy. Hover. All right, this game looked kind of like a like a jet jet grind radio, jet set radio, future kind of game. Uh, I heard it wasn't that great, but it was 15 bucks at Best Buy, so I picked it up. I have a feeling that that physical might go rare in the future too, so I had to pick it up. Bayonetta 2, fantastic game, of course. Bayonetta 1 is also fantastic. This is the way you do it, by the way. You don't put a freaking code in the box that gives you access to the first game or another game. You put both games on the freaking cart. And I th to, technically, they're both not on the cart. I think access to the other game is on the cart. But once you put the cart in, it says you can download Bayonetta 1. Perfect. Why don't you fucking do that, Capcom? I forgot who, who, who was earlier. Deathmark. This is a game I've been wanting to play for a little while. Visual novel game. Scary. Ooh. It actually looks terrifying, so I do want to play this in the future. So, uh, a lot of games I have yet to play. I did play both of these. Um... Not all the way through, but I played them. Child of Light Ultimate Edition and Valiant Hearts: The Great War. Valiant Hearts is a rough game. It's 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 pretty emotional. Child of Light I only played a few hours of, but I love the way it looks. I love what the way both of these look. Um, and uh, I wish more of these type of games were made by Ubisoft, but they don't really do them anymore, which sucks. <sighs> but this is a really cool compilation, so I had to get that. Uh, and. Sol Sodomy? What is it? Saldom? Saldom. Drop, connect, erase. It's like a puzzle game with a couple of cutesy little characters. I think I got this for like seven bucks or something online. I was like, whatever, I'll add it to the collection. Uh, and uh, yeah. I don't know if it's good. I'm gonna assume new. <laughs> All right, sorry for the jump cut there. I had to end it uh, and delete some footage off my camera before it uh, went full because uh, that's what happens with cameras. So anyway, uh, we're, I'm going to try to get through these ones quicker because I did say I probably get through them in like 20, 30 minutes, and we're already 20 minutes later, and uh, I'm I'm not. So we're going to try to get through these quicker. Uh, Ultimate Alliance 3, really fun game. Really love the original two games. Uh, well, the original game. The second one was good, not great, but uh, this one was okay. It was it was good. I want to play more of it. Venom was fun to play as. Um, I'll, I'll shout out to Venom, but. Um, I want to play more of it in the future, so I, I've said that plenty of times though. So Civilization 6, I thought this would be a perfect um, console for this game. Couldn't get into it, not gonna lie, I'm just too dumb for this game, I think. Uh, Steins Gate, hell yeah, this is uh, Elite, right? Yeah, Elite, this comes with the anime cutscenes and stuff. I've been wanting to watch that anime for a little while. I'm thinking what I want to do is just watch the anime first because I have it on Blu-ray and then play this game. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Maybe, should I do a reaction for that? I think that might be a good one. I don't know. Nintendo Labo. I got the Labo. I always waste some money, I'm not gonna lie. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. Ubisoft. Gods and Monsters, that was cool, or whatever the fuck it was called. Uh, all these original games are, are alright, but give us Rayman 3. Rayman, you know, Rayman whatever. There's already a Rayman 3, but you know what I mean. The third one of this trilogy. It, it's not a trilogy yet, but you should make it a trilogy. This game's great. And the musical levels are still some of the best levels ever in video game history. Skullgirls Second Encore, even though the guy that develops this is a uh, scumbag, I heard this game's really fun, so I picked it up. Never really played it. Collection of Mana. Uh, I didn't realize I actually had this like a few weeks ago. I, I mentioned on like the Blue Rupees podcast, I was like, oh, I didn't know there was a physical of this game. And then I look at my collection, I was like, I already have it. <laughs> It comes with like the first three games, I think, right? So Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and Trials of Mana. Uh, I played the Trials of Mana remake. I enjoyed it. I never, I never finished it. I got like 15 hours in, but I enjoyed it from what I played. Um, Aqua Moto Racing Utopia. This was like a cheap game, so I just picked it up. 
Uh, you, Siberia, amazing adventure game right here. I haven't played it in so long. I played the first two. Heard the third game sucked ass, but um, I had to pick this up. It was a uh, physical only in the Peggy. Is that Peggy, right? Uh, the Peggy regions. So, um, yeah, I had to pick it up. What is Peggy again? Is that that's Europe, right? Or is that a different rating? I forgot. I don't know. Let me know. Um, but I had to pick it up. It was like super cheap too. I think it was like twenty bucks. Um, Poi Explorer Explorer Edition. I'm sorry, that was like Explorers or some. I think it was like a platformer. It was actually pretty good, so I picked it up. Um, I think I got it for like five bucks. I think it was ten bucks at GameStop, but they had like the half off sale, so got it for super cheap. Commandos 2 HD Remaster. I heard this is a terrible remaster, but it was super cheap at GameStop, so I picked it up. Phoenix Wright Trilogy comes with the first three games. Phoenix Wright is one of my favorite series. This and Zero Escape are two of my favorite, I guess you could say, like visual novel with some puzzle aspects to it. Uh, games, love these games. The characters are endearing. Uh, Phoenix is great. Maya is great. Mia is great. Edgeworth. Uh, uh, Frances France Francisca Von Karma. Francesca? Fran Francesca. Damn, Jesus Christ. I can't pronounce fucking anything. Uh, but this is the Japanese version, of course, because it never came out physically here. But if you play it on your American Switch, you'll get it in America. You'll get it in American. That's American. That language is American. Uh, fitness boxing. Don't fucking make jokes. I know. I, you sw I smell them. Ooh, fat jokes. They're coming. Um... Look at what I looked like last year when I did this H this uh, uh, this Switch collection video, and tell me I don't look skinnier. Hey, shout outs to everybody. Also, I want to just get serious real quick. This game's okay, whatever. Um, shout outs to everybody that's been giving me like kudos like about my weight loss. I don't really talk about my 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 uh, I guess personal life on YouTube, but shout outs to everybody that noticed and said, "Hey, man, congrats on the weight loss." Shout outs to you. Mario Maker 2. Great game. I'm terrible at making levels. I made like two and they're awful. They're like the worst. Uh, but I like playing levels. I haven't really gone back to it in a little while. But I do like them. Um, why are these like stuck together? Oh, there's like sticky shit all over this way. Hunting Simulator. I think this and like... Uh, oh, it's right here. This and Farming Simulator on Switch were both like 10 bucks or something like that at... at GameStop recently, so not recently. It was like it might have been 2019, honestly. But uh, for that price, shit, ten bucks for both of them. I think it was ten bucks. I could be wrong. Why not? Uh, the Book of Unwritten Tales too. I actually heard this game is pretty good and kind of charming. Good characters. Uh, I might try this in the future. Um, I got it for like Best Buy I had like for eight bucks or some shit. Same thing for this game, uh, The Legend of K Anniversary. I actually played this back when it first came out on PS2. It was like a budget title. It was actually pretty solid from what I remember. And uh, I did pick it up when it was on PS4. And uh, I remember enjoying it then too. So thinking it was okay, not amazing, but a good solid. 7 out of 10. Scribblenauts Mega Pack. I think this is like the perfect console for Scribblenauts. Uh, it's also on Xbox and PS4, this Mega Pack. But um, I really love Scribblenauts. And this is like, um, which one was it? Uh, Unmat, no, Unlimited. Unlimited, it comes with Unmasked, which is the DC one that has all the DC heroes. And uh, Unlimited, which uh, of course is just just a regular Scribblenauts game. That one, Unlimited, was on the Wii U, and I played the shit out of that one. I made some good-ass uh, creations. I made a Stone Cold Steve Austin. I made a Voss from uh, Far Cry 3. It made sense back 10 years ago almost. Um, who else I made? I made like a bunch of characters. I think, did I make Bill Nye the Science guy? I feel like I made one, uh, a Bill Nye, and they all look great. So shout outs to me. I, I made some great ones. I, that Stone Cold Steve Austin, I'm very like proud of myself because I made the vest with the 316 on it. Uh, gave him his, you know, his goatee. God, so good. You know, I might have to crack this open and remake those guys. <laughs> no one will use them because I don't think anybody's playing it. But Scribble Lots is a very underrated series in my opinion. Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, I played about an hour. Couldn't get into it. I, I was never like the biggest fan of Luigi's Mansion, but I heard this game gets really good later on, so I might go back to it. Super Mario Odyssey, of course. Fantastic. One of the best games of 2017. And 2017, at least for the Switch, was fucking phenomenal. That year in general was an amazing year. Nier Automata, uh, Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, Oh shit, what else? Uh, this, uh, 
There's something. There was a bunch of other games. Uh, 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 uh there's a bunch. <laughs> Pick any of them. There's a lot. Speaking of Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild. Happy four year anniversary, you sexy bitch. There you go. Ah, oh, this game. I'm actually ashamed of myself. I still have yet to play this. Octopath Traveler. When they showed that triangle strategy game, which I, I love that name, by the way. Immediately, I was like, this game looks good, but I need to play Octopath Traveler. <laughs> so, I'd love to say this is a game I'll play this year, but who knows. Please leave a comment that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fat fraud. Because I don't play any of these fucking games. <laughs> Speaking of a game I never played, Owlboy! I heard this is amazing. One of the best games you can get on the Switch if you like Metrovanias, but I haven't played it. At least I support the studios by giving them my money. And that's a positive, right? So there you go. This is a game I did play, though. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen on the Nintendo Switch. This isn't probably the console you should play this game on, especially now we have the new gen consoles. Uh, if you're going to get it on Xbox One, Dark Arisen, the port, uh, get it on Xbox One or PS4 and play it on your new consoles if you have them. If not, just play them on regular Xbox One or PS4. I'm sure they, they run perfectly fine. Um, I'm sure it runs good on Switch. It's just like one of those games where you want the, you, you want the vastness and the, the performance to be at the best whenever you're climbing on a giant beast and stabbing it in the fucking face. This game's great. I really like it. I love the pawn system. I hope the rumors of a Dragon's Dogma 2 are true. I mean, we had we just had that anime. I mean, why do an anime if there's no other there's no game, right? I mean, come on. I've been saying that for the last four years for Castlevania, considering this fucking anime's been out for that long. And Konami's like, oh, how about the Castlevania compilation? I mean, that's good. Thank you. Mmm, food. Mmm, yummy. But, like, fucking new game, please? Oh, I forgot this one, too. This is another download game. Putty Squad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Putty Squad. Hell yeah. It's uh, the little-known uh, uh, division of the Squirtle Squad. Um, next. Actually, that's a Putty Squad sounds like a... Oh, I'm sorry. Super Putty Squad. Excuse me. Um, it sounds like like a Power Rangers thing. You know how you had the Putty, putty Patrol? What is it? The Putties, right? It's like Putty Squad. Um, whatever. Sonic Forces, just picked this up at Gamefly. I think at Gamefly, like I was there. Um, from Gamefly for like nine bucks. I had to get it. I don't think that game's bad, actually. All right, sorry for the jump cut there. Someone was calling me. I had to go answer. So anyway, uh, Sonic Forces, I forgot. Was I talking about that? Sonic Forces, nine bucks, Gamefly, I don't know. Um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, baby, for Nintendo Switch. I love it says for Nintendo Switch right there, too. <laughs> Just in case you didn't see this fucking thing that says Switch. Um, I'm not going to lie. The Xenoverse games I could just never get into, but I think I got this for super cheap. Um, I played Xenoverse 2 on Xbox One. I just didn't care. I didn't care for the first one. I didn't care for the second one. I just I couldn't get into it. I don't know. Um, honestly, I'd rather these games be 2D fighters again. You know, like Tenkaichi was good. Don't get me wrong. But um, I, don't know, I, I just missed the Budokai 1, 2, and 3 days. Honestly, dude, three was, f ooh, so good. That story mode was fantastic. Um, Overwatch Legendary Edition. Now, this is kind of cheating because this also is, um, there's no game. And I don't even know why they have, I'm not going to, all right. I, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I used this code already, but it comes with three months of online. Um, but I did buy it. It is a game I have, so, and it comes with a case, so. Whatever. I should have like a section. You know what? I should do that. I'll, I'll figure it out later. I should have a section in my collection that rhymed. Um, dedicated to just that kind of stuff. Next, Sports Party. Now this is like a kind of like a sports, uh, Wii Sports for the Switch kind of. Has like a bunch of beach games. I heard it was okay. It's a Ubisoft title. Um, so if you talk about it in a bad way, they'll fucking remove your video. So watch out. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. Uh, I used to love Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was thinking of maybe getting back into it on the Switch. But then I thought about it and there's like about a billion cards now. And I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. So uh, I did get it and it does come with the cards. So that's kind of cool. Hey, look at that. These might be worth like five bucks in tw 30 years. So <laughs> you never know. Uh, I do love the original like GBA Yu-Gi-Oh! games. The Sacred Cards top tier Yu-Gi-Oh games, in my opinion. 
SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. Comes with a bunch of like old SNK stuff. Uh, I played a few of these games. Really fun. I really liked it. Uh, speaking of SNK, SNK Heroines. Um, you know, some of your favorite characters like... You know. <laughs> yeah, like some of the great ones. Like them. Right there. Those two. That one right there. Right, right, right there. That one. Yeah. Isn't, uh, what's her name from King of Fighters in this? I don't see her. Yeah, she, yeah, there she is. She's right there. I forgot her name. The one with the, the hanging, when, whenever she, like, she's in her pose or, you know, her assets are hanging. So, <laughs> Slay the Spire. Slay! I've been wanting to play this, too, for a long time, and yada yada. I'll play it eventually. Fucking, you know, uh, <laughs> at this point. But I also have this on Xbox One. Penny Punching Princess. I also got, or Princesses. No, it's Princess. Um, I also got this during that Target clearance I mentioned earlier. I think this is like eight bucks or something. It was really cheap, so I was like, screw it. Let me pick it up. <sighs> GameStop cases. I'll just get through these real quick. Uh, the Longest Five Minutes, which is a, R a JRPG. No, I guess it's just a regular RPG. Um, that was very like Earthbound looking inspired. I wanted to play it, never did, obviously. Uh, and Wild Guns Reloaded, which Wild Guns is a really fun game, so I wanted to get this. And of course, Came with the GameStop cases. Thank you, GameStop. Power to players, not to the collectors, I guess. Yep, I mean, I can't complain too much. I usually, when I trade stuff in the GameStop, I don't give them the cases, so, you know. Karma. Anyway, Puyo Puyo Tetris. This comes with uh, the, like, a little, like, keychain thing. That's why it's in the outer box. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu has a display case, but... I assure you, I have the game. And this game is enjoyable. Yellow is one of my favorite Pokemon games, uh, so it was a little upsetting that they kind of they did that to Yellow, but it was it was still fun. It was fun. Ring Fit Adventure. Uh, honestly, I probably should have sold this like a year ago when this game was like going for like two hundred bucks. Now you can find it everywhere, but you know, whatever. Grip Combat Racing. I think it's called Grip Combat Racing, uh, even though it just says Grip on Xbox One. I believe it's called Grip Combat Racing, but whatever. I think this is like five bucks at Best Buy. Same thing for this game. Close to the Sun, which every time I saw this game, it gave me like massive Bioshock vibes, and that's always good vibes. Those are good vibes. Um, I didn't hear it was great though. So. The Outer Worlds. Um, I had to pick this up because I heard the port was bad when it first came out, and then it got better. And I really like this game. I, I, I actually love this game. It was one of my favorite games of 2019. So. And new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Honestly, I only got this because it was super cheap during the best best uh, Black Friday sale. Jesus, um, GameStop was like doing buy two get one free on certain Switch games, and this and a couple other games were on sale for like forty bucks each. No, 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 they were thirty bucks each. So I got this, another game, and then another game for free. I mean, not free. I got this, another game, and then I got another game for free for like fifty-five bucks altogether. So. I might actually get rid of this, honestly, in the future. Because I don't, I don't really care for the new Mario Brothers games. It's just not my preference, I guess. Especially since now I have, uh, like, all these other Mario games I can play. Uh, or Origami? I think it's Origami. This is actually a really cool little, like, if Mark of the Ninja, if you ever played that game, was more like a, like a Tenchu game. Uh, it looks really cool. Never played it, though. So I heard it was really good, though. I think there's a second one coming out, right? Am I right or wrong? I think there is. Um, Cooking Mama Cookstar. Remember this game earlier last year? Everybody thought, like, if you buy this, they'll, it, the game will hack you or whatever. Um, yeah, it, it was going for a good amount of money because people didn't think it was actually going to get released. Then it did, and now it's like a $30, $40 game. I just bought it because I thought it was funny. That was so... Well, I bought it because I thought it would be rare in the future, but I, thought, I, I also bought it because I thought it was so funny that everybody thought it was going to hack you if you play it. Um, Dragon Quest Eleven: Echoes of a Elusive Age, Definitive Edition, of an Elusive Age, excuse me. Um, and uh, Dragon Quest Eight is a great game. That's the only one I played all the way through, um, and uh, I really want to play Eleven in the future. I'll probably play it on Xbox at this point because it's on their Game Pass, which is a good-ass ga uh, Game Pass game. Oh, my God. Uh, Harvest Moon Light of Hope Special Edition. I have yet to play this one. Uh, the new one just came out yesterday, I believe. Or two days ago? No, it was yesterday. Um, and, uh, and no reviews for it, so I have no idea if it's good or not. 
I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say it's not good because <laughs> most Harvest Moon games aren't good anymore. Even though I heard this one wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It was like a, it's like a six, which is not what I want for Harvest Moon. Story of Seasons, that's like the eight out of ten, maybe even a nine out of ten. But this shit, it's like a six, which is not terrible. I guess could be worse. Could be that one on 3DS that had like a 42 on Metacritic. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Uh, Super Mario 3D uh, All Stars, of course, have this. Gotta have that. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, which uh, I couldn't really quite get into, uh, which is surprising considering I I will love Zelda. I don't really care for Dynasty Warriors, but I do love Zelda enough that you think I would at least get through it more. I get through more than like two hours of it, but I just couldn't. Spyro a Reignited Trilogy. This has a funny story behind it. Did I save the note? I did. I thought I did. Oh shit, drop some. The note. It was funny. I bought this on OfferUp, and the note, if people don't know, this is the note I got. Have fun, enjoy. Had a few people ask to purchase this before you bought it. If I pay shipping, would you mind sending back once you've downloaded it? So, the the person that I bought this from, here's the note just in case you thought I was bullshitting. Uh, that is not my handwriting, by the way. Um, if, you, if, you're, if you're thinking I'm faking this. Um, they thought that because you have to download the games onto your Switch, that means you own the games. Even though you still need the cartridge to play those games. You download them on the Switch, but you still need the, you still need the cart to play them. I mean, the cart needs to be on the Switch. Um, they just thought, like, I could just download them and then send it back for free. Uh, I mean, they pay for shipping, but... Yeah, sure, I'll send it back, but you can better give me my fucking money back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't respond though because I thought that was so funny that I just wanted to let them stew in their own stupidity um, and uh, I have a funny note to uh, make sure when I if I ever sell this again to take that note out because <laughs> that would be funny if they thought I, I sent that note to whoever I sell it to because I, I was thinking of getting rid of this one because I have on Xbox One what's the point um, but uh, Deadly Premonition 2 I will play this sometime I played like 5-6 hours of it I want to. I heard it's better now. They got rid of some of that transphobic stuff, which is good, because um, that's a little. But um, Deadly Permission One is great, and I mean, it might not be the most fun game to play, but it's great in its own right. Um, Sonic Mania. Uh, this is not the plus version. I think the plus one goes for like thirty forty, but uh, Sonic Mania is a great game. Cinemora EX. This is like a bullet hell game made by uh, I'm pretty sure Suda, right? It is Suda, right? That made this. Um, I remember it being really hard. As a bullet hell, you, you expect that. Uh, Terraria, which is a game I actually, for a little bit, for a teeny weeny bit, got addicted to. Um, I would say probably I put maybe 15 hours into this game uh, back when the 360 version came out, not this version. Uh, and I picked this up when it was on sale at GameStop for like 15 bucks, thinking I'll go back into it, but I never did. Uh, Brawl Out. This is a like a Smash Brothers clone, I guess you you would consider it. Um, it has like the the what's his name, uh, the Guacamole guy, and it has the uh, the Hyper Light Drifter guy and stuff, right? Uh, and then Monkey Man, and it has like a bunch of indie characters, which is kind of cool. So it's like the indie Smash Brothers almost. Here's High Wars: Age of Calamity. Where did I put that cart? Finally, I could put it in here. There you go. There you go. Bam. Complete now. Uh, great game. I really enjoyed this game. I mean, all right. When I say great, it's great for what it is. It doesn't run all that particularly. It doesn't run particularly well. But the story is fun. Uh, I like that it's a prequel. Also, kind of not a prequel. You'll see if you play it. But um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being in that world, and I love that they added a lot of the Breath of the Wild mechanics to that type of game. I thought it was really cool. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. I've been really wanting to get back into this ever since they showed Diablo 2. Uh, Diablo is a, is a weird series for me because... Um, it was the game, by the way. Because um, I always loved the games, but I never cared about the lore. The lore? I know the lore is cool, but the way they present it in the games is just like... you're not, It's isometric, so you're far away from the camera. And people are talking to you, and they're just like talking to you, telling you the lore, you know what I mean? And there's some awesome cutscenes, don't get me wrong, but... There's a lot of just like, let me tell you about years past. I'm like, okay, Decker can't. I don't want to. <laughs> Ancestors Legacy. Uh, this game I got for like seven bucks, I think, on Gamefly. Metro Redux. Great games, both of them. Uh, and to be fair, I never finished the first game, but I did finish Last Light, and I still want to really, 
really badly play um, Exodus, um, and it's like the perfect time to play it now. I got that Series X, so um, Metro Redux, frick yeah, baby, hell yeah. Splatoon 2, I got a Peggy case for it, but I do have the actual game. So, there you go. Um, and, uh, yeah, Splatoon 2 is fun. Splatoon 3, of course, is coming out soon. And I do want to play more Splatoon 2. And Burnout Paradise Remastered, which is a great game. Not as good as Burnout Revenge or 3 Takedown, but still a good game. Uh, I wish they would remaster Takedown and Revenge. Either or or both. That would be nice. But uh, I'll take uh, I'll take Paradise. That's good, I guess. And that is it. Those are all the collector's editions. Those are all the games. I know it's like an hour long video, but considering how many freaking games I had, you know. Sorry, it's long. <laughs> it's long. It's long. Sorry. Um, but there you go. That is that. So here's uh, here's the stacks. Look at this. Yeah, look at all this stack. Oh my God, stack. You want to see another stack? Here it comes. Here comes another stack. Oh, it's coming, baby. Boom. I got two other ones. I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna share those ones. You've seen them already. Um, but uh, and I'm looking at another stack right here with a bunch of collector's editions. I don't have to put all this stuff away. And yeah, it's not gonna take long. It's not gonna take long. But um, there you go. That is that. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you know, let me know what you have in your collection, what you're playing. Um, if you make collection videos, send me a link. I'll check it out. You know, I've been in the mood to watch some collectors. Uh, showing off their collection uh, I watch that stuff too because I'm a collector and I'm interested to see what other people have so there you go that is it over 150 switch games and I talk about the ones that I can talk about at least um, I, I, I don't like being that one like uh, that guy that just like shows cases it goes Splatoon 2 Metro Redux this fucking game <laughs> you know <laughs> like I want to at least talk about them in some way, like where I got them from, if I, if I plan on playing it, if I did play it, what I thought of it, any history I have with the game in, in any form. Make it a little bit more interesting. Sure, it's longer, but you know what? My fucking video. I'll do what I want. Anyway, there you go. That is it. Thank you for watching. And uh, you know what? To, to see if you actually watched it all, leave a comment. Say whatever you want in the comment, but make sure you put, put switch hashtag gore in the comment and I'll know you watch all the way through any anywhere in the comment anywhere you want it doesn't matter switch hashtag gore um, there you go switch space hashtag gore or you can put it with no space I don't I don't care anyway there you go that's it bye <laughs> see you next year happy four year anniversary switch wait don't shut the video off just yet I thought it would have been kind of cool if I show you what my uh, switch collection looks like when it's all put back up on the shelf um, so here is the collection right here. I got the Dust Hills figure right there. Got a Banana Man, Pedro. Got a Stardew Valley, that really cool little cardboard cutout thing that looks awesome. Here's all my collector's editions for PS4 and Switch. Right there is the Undertale one for PS4. Got those in the back, kind of stacked up nicely. Um, there you go. And these are all my Switch games right here. One thing I wanted to show in the video that I completely forgot to are these right here. These are Switch Player magazines, um, which are really cool. You can get these for like, I think they're like seven bucks a month on their Patreon. I'm not supported by them or anything, just saying. Those are super cool. So I have a collection of those. Read them every month. Really cheap too, considering they're like made by fans pretty much. Um, and uh, yeah, here's my PS4 collection. Uh, those are empty boxes, by the way, before, before someone says, what? What are those games? And then I got the Switch controller for the uh, SNES. Um, and here's my Doom stuff. Look at that. Look at that stuff. Ain't that cool? Got a, got a face hugger on him. And then there's my Last of Us statues and stuff. So a quick little uh, tour. Oh, here's the Oddworld thing I was talking about. There you go. So you see it there. And I got a little spirit friend from, uh, from Greece. Greece. Whatever. How you pronounce it? So there you go. Um, and uh, this is where uh, I make my videos, right here. Quick little room tour. This is my chair. There's my backdrop kind of thing. And uh, Samurai Jack stuff. And uh, oh, come over here. This is my Xbox One games over here. And then here's a, here's a new thing I'm doing, a little project I'm doing where I'm putting like a bunch of signed stuff on, side, on the side of my Xbox One collection. So there you go. Here's my uh, here's Godzilla and Overwatch stuff. Here's Torgren. Oh, he's really bright, but whatever. I have my lamp right there. So, uh, a little quick tour of my room. It's really messy in here. 
Here's a Samurai Jack print I bought. Um, and there you go. So, that's it.